Why, hello and welcome back. Today we will start lecture 1-2 on kinematics. In particular, today we're going to talk about wheel locomotion as we continue our discussion of advanced mobile robotics for autonomous vehicles. So as part of this lecture, I will describe wheel locomotion in the context of mobile robot navigation. And from there, we will continue on to discuss forward and inverse kinematics for mobile robot navigation. And we will define the terms that we need for forward kinematics, including instantaneous center of curvature or instantaneous center of rotation to represent the forward kinematics of a robot. And then finally, we will talk about kinematic controllers and inverse kinematics and how you can find a robot's wheel velocities in order to control it to go to a certain pose in the environment. So locomotion of wheel robots. We would have a robot that rolls along the x-axis. And typically in a differential drive robot, it may or may not also have rotation in the z-axis. Examples of a differential drive robot would be the Pioneer 2DX. And also the robot that would be built in this course is an example of a differential drive robot that does not rotate in the z-axis. Robots that are not holonomic cannot move along the y-axis. We say that those type of robots have full control of their degrees of freedom and they would be omnidirectional. So mobile robot kinematics is defined as the dynamic model of how a mobile robot behaves and we're going to design and we are going to derive a general one for a differential robot during today's lecture. Kinematics is a description of the mechanical behavior of the robot and it's necessary to be able to model this in order to design and control a robot to move to any certain pose in the environment. So mobile robotics kinematics is used for position estimation, motion estimation, as well as commanding position and motion in order to get to a certain location. Mobile robots are difficult to control for several reasons, being one, that they move unbounded with respect to the environment. So there's no way to directly measure the robot's position, unlike let's say an industrial robot, which is tethered to a certain space and time. So you can have the forward and reverse kinematics with respect to a static location. So in order to find the location of a robot in the world, the position must be integrated over time by using its velocity. This is called using odometry as well to estimate its um, position in the world by using the velocity. This integration, however, creates inaccuracies in position and motion estimation. And then you also will get odometry error from the robot with, from slippage and things like that as well, or from encoders, which may not be as discreet as you need them to be when they are measuring wheel position. Each wheel contributes to the robot's motion and imposes constraints on the robot's motion. So all of these constraints must be modeled with respect to the reference or the global inertial frame in order to model the kinematics for the mobile robot. So let's define a robot reference frame. And this is a little bit of a review because we did talk a bit about this when we had our linear algebra introduction as well. So let's say we define the three-dimensional space that represents the pose of the robot in the world as XR, YR, and theta, the X position, the Y position, and the angular position of the robot. Then we could also have the global or the inertial reference frame defined as XG and YG, which, which represents the world, the global reference, where the origin is O. And then the angular difference between the global and the reference frames is called theta. This also would represent the robot's rotation with respect to the global frame. And point P on the robot chassis in the global reference frame would be X and Y, which is the robot's position. So now if we define a vector that is the robot's reference frame with respect to the global reference frame, then it would be X, Y, theta. Sound familiar? We've talked about this before. Also familiar is the orthogonal rotation matrix. We've talked about this in the previous lecture when we talked about linear algebra. The orthogonal rotation matrix is used to map the motion in the global reference frame to the motion in the robot's local reference frame. So the rotation of the robot around the angle theta, recall this would be about the z-axis, 
would be r of theta is equal to cosine theta, sine theta zero, negative sine theta, cosine theta zero, 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 one. So the orthogonal rotation matrix is used to convert robot velocity in the global reference frame to components of motion along the X and Y axis in the robot's reference frame. So we call this PR theta, which is the rotation matrix times the velocity of the robot with respect to the global reference frame. So R theta times X dot Y dot theta dot. So the vector PR describes the location of the robot with respect to the local reference frame and we can then use our rotation matrix to get the location of the robot with respect to the global reference frame. And we can also go both directions by taking the inverse of the matrix. So let's look at an example. Rotation example one will be from the global to the local reference frame. Suppose that a robot is at point P in the world and theta is equal to pi over two and the robot's velocity with respect to the global reference frame can be defined as x dot y dot theta dot. Find the robot's motion with respect to the local reference frame, xr, yr. So the motion along xr and yr due to theta would be found by using the rotation matrix about pi over 2 times pr dot. So that would be 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 times x dot, y dot, theta dot. So we would have y dot, negative x dot, and theta dot. Let's see why this makes sense if we look at it on our diagram here. Well, we see that once the robot rotates, that it is now moving upward along that axis. So that's why the x-axis velocity is now y dot, and the y-axis is now opposing the x-axis. So that's why now the y velocity would be negative x dot. So now let's look at rotation example two, local to global reference frame. And suppose that the robot is still at point P and theta is still pi over two, and the robot's velocity with respect to its local frame is now x dot, y dot, theta dot. To find the robot's motion in the global reference frame, x, g, y, g, and the motion along x, g, and y, z due to theta, we use a very similar formula, but notice one key difference here. The velocity of the robot with respect to the global reference frame is now the inverse of the rotation matrix pi over two times the velocity of the robot. So this is now zero, negative one, zero, one, zero, 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 one times x dot, y dot, theta dot. And that yields negative y dot, x dot, and theta dot. And if you look now, you should see that the velocity of the robot with respect to the global reference frame is negative y dot in the x direction and that x dot equals y dot. So what's the difference between forward and inverse kinematics? Well, forward kinematics involves estimating a mobile robot's motion and or pose given its angular and linear velocity. So you would give it certain values and try to estimate where you think it's going to go and how it's going to get there. Whereas inverse kinematics looks at determining what velocity, linear and angular, I need to give the robot so that it can achieve a certain motion or pose in the environment. So it's basically looking at this information from two different perspectives. For inverse kinematics, I give it the desired pose and I want to figure out the velocities. And for forward kinematics, I am given the velocities and I want to figure out what pose it ends up at. So for kinematics provides an estimate of the robot's position given its geometry and the speed of its wheels. So it requires an accurate measurement of the wheel velocities over time, which we've already talked about. It can only be accurate for so long. You will get some odometry error and this will accumulate the more that the robot moves in the world. And this can be due to several factors, including surface, the types of wheels, skid turns, etc. And because this position error accumulates over time and grows with time, ideally you would want to have a way to correct for this. So things you could do is use some kind of sensor such as an encoder or a beacon or something in order to calibrate or zero out the error that's going to build when you use this odometry method in order to estimate the robot's position in the world. So let's consider some things about path and trajectory. So there's a difference between the degrees of freedom granted by steering versus direction based upon wheel velocity. In this class, we focus primarily on differential drive robots because that's the kind of robot that we use. So there won't be any steering. So we 
completely move the robot based upon velocities. So the difference is in the context of trajectories rather than paths. A trajectory is like a path, but it has the additional dimension of time. So now I'm not just trying to figure out where the robot's going, but I am tying that to when it's going to get there. So motion control or kinematic control is not as straightforward because mobile robots are not holonomic systems. And what that means is that they cannot move sideways. So I have to kind of estimate by giving the robot velocities, how can I get it from point A to point B? So for example, a robot has a goal trajectory where it moves along the X axis at a constant speed where X sub I means the inertial or global frame of one millimeter per second for one second. Then the wheels adjust for one second and then the robot spins counterclockwise at 90 degrees for one second. And then the wheels adjust for one second. And finally, the robot moves parallel to the inertial Y axis for one second. So on the left, we have an image of what this looks like as the robot moves forward, spins clockwise, and then moves up the Y axis. So if we look at what the angular velocities for the left and right wheel look like, we see that the right wheel is at negative 60 degrees and the left wheel is at 60 degrees per second. And the right wheel is at negative 60 degrees per second. Then after one second, they both start to slow down and then they both turn at approximately negative 60 degrees per second as the robot spins. Then the next second, the wheels adjust again. And then finally, when it's moving along the Y axis, the left wheel is back at about 50 or 60 degrees per second. And the right wheel is at negative 60 degrees per second. That bottom figure shows the positions of the robot with respect to the global inertial frame as it's moving. And what you see is that it starts off with only the X axis changing. Then when it's spinning, only the angle for the robot changes. And then once it's moving up the Y axis, only the Y position changes. So for the Ford kinematics model for a differential drive robot, consider that the robot has two wheels and each wheel has a radius of R and that the point centered between those two drive wheels is called P and that each wheel is a distance L from P. If the rotational speed of the two wheels is psi one dot and psi two dot, then the forward kinematic model is the velocity of the robot with respect to the global reference frame, x dot y dot theta dot, is going to be a function of the radius of the wheels, the distance between the center of rotation and the wheels, the angle, and the angular velocity of the left and right wheel. So the linear velocity for a differential drive robot can be defined where x, y, theta is the pose, r is the radius um, of the instantaneous center of rotation, and l is the width of the robot. And so we would have the velocity of the left wheel and the velocity of the right wheel to create the linear velocity. For linear velocity in the x direction, each wheel contributes one half of the total speed. And since wheels cannot move sideways, the velocity in the y direction is zero. So what you would have here is that the right wheel velocity is one half r psi one dot or one half the velocity of that wheel. And x r two's velocity is one half r psi two dot or one half the right wheel velocity. So the total velocity or the linear velocity for the robot is going to be one half the sum of the velocities for the two wheels. The angular velocity for a differential drive robot about theta is calculated from the contribution from each of the two wheels working alone as well. So the right wheel contributes counterclockwise rotation omega one around the left wheel and the left wheel contributes clockwise rotation omega two about the right wheel. Each rotation would have a radius of 2L if L is the difference from the wheel to the center of rotation. So we would say that omega 1 is R psi 1 dot over 2L and omega 2 is R psi 2 dot over 2L. The right wheel linear velocity would be omega times R plus L over 2 and the left wheel linear velocity would be omega times R minus L over 2. And the center of rotation about the instantaneous center of rotation would be R equals L over 2 
times VL plus VR over VL minus VR, or the angular velocity of the robot is VR minus VL over L. I know this is a lot of equations, but I hope it's kind of intuitively making sense for you. It's all about how the robot rotates about the z-axis with respect to theta, and a lot of it is just based upon trig and geometry. So now, thinking about the forward kinematics for a differential drive robot, we have something that we call the instantaneous center of curvature, ICC, which we will talk about more later, which we will talk about more later. And when these wheels are rolling with respect to the ICC, what you will see here is that the radius of the ICC is directly between the center of rotation for the robot, where the original pose of the robot would be x, y, theta. And after it moves a certain amount of time, which we call delta t, the new pose for the robot would be p of t plus delta t, where the robot has moved with a velocity v of t. So what you should notice here is I can now write this equation in terms of the velocity with respect to x, y, and theta. And hopefully that first matrix looks familiar to you because that's just the rotation matrix where now the angle is omega delta t, which is the angular velocity of the robot times the amount of time it's moved. So it's cosine omega delta t, negative sine omega delta t zero, sine omega delta t, cosine omega delta t zero, 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 one, times its position with respect to the ICC, which is x minus ICC x, y minus ICC x theta, plus the initial position, ICC X plus ICC Y omega delta T. So then as we've already discussed, in order to find the position of the robot, you have to then integrate these equations. So X of T would be the integral over T of V of tau cosine theta of tau D tau. Y of T would be the integral over T of V of tau sine of theta of tau D tau. And theta of T would be the integral over T of the angular velocity omega of tau D tau. You can also express the forward kinematics for a differential drive robot in terms of the left and right wheel velocity instead of the overall velocity of the robot. And so what you should see here is that the only difference here is in x of t, y of t, and theta of t, where now the integral is one half the integral over t, vr of tau plus vl of tau, cosine theta of tau, d tau. y of t is one half the integral over t, vr of tau plus vl of tau, sine theta of tau d tau, and the angular, the theta of tau is now one over L, the integral over time, VR of tau minus VL of tau d tau. And finally, we can write the complete forward kinematics model for the differential drive robot, given the robot's rotation with respect to the global reference frame, its wheel velocities, radius of the wheels, and distance between the wheel, wheels, it is po and distance between the wheels, it is possible to find the robot's velocity with respect to the global or inertial reference frame given by the velocity of the robot with respect to the global reference frame is the rotation matrix about theta inverse times the robot's velocities xr dot, yr dot, theta r dot. Or we can also write that as the velocity of the robot with respect to the global reference frame is equal to the inverse of the rotation matrix times xr dot plus xl dot zero omega r minus omega l cosine theta negative sine theta zero sine theta cosine theta zero 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 one times r v r dot plus r v l dot over two zero r v r dot minus r v one dot l dot over two l And this concludes our introduction to wheel locomotion and forward kinematics. I know the math gets a little intense. You may need to watch the video a couple of times to get it, but you sketch it out and you'll definitely get it. I hope you're coming back tomorrow. Have a robotacular day.